Jeff Burton is a driver that flew under the radar throughout most of his career. But in the late 90s, that wasn't really the case. Jeff Burton got his big break in 1996 when he signed to drive for Jack Roush. His first year with the team wasn't really anything memorable, but between the years of 1997 to 2000, Jeff Burton became a series championship contender. During this short time period, he scored 15 wins and the force he finished in points was fifth twice. His breakout year will be in 1999 where he scored 6 wins, 18 top 5s, 23 top 10s and led over a thousand laps. Now the following season he'll have a very similar year to 1999 except he'll have less wins but finished higher in the points. His final points result being third. In 2001 the 99 team started to slip a little bit. He finished top 10 in points but was very inconsistent. The year wasn't all that bad though, he did score two wins, one of those wins being the Coca-Cola 600, a crown jewel race. In the year 2002, Jeff Burton and his team looked to get back in championship form, but it didn't end up like that at all. Jeff Burton became the worst performing Roush car and remained it like that all the way up until his last days at Roush. He had no wins and finished outside the top 10 in points between the years of 2002 to 2004. Midway through 2004, Jeff Burton left Roush Racing and took over the number 30 AOL Chevrolet at RCR from Mr. Always Angry, Johnny Sauter. After the short amount of races that Jeff Burton did with the team, he had a lot of faith in the team and actually thought that they could contend for a championship going forward. In 2005, Jeff Burton will stay with RCR Racing but will be moved to the number 31 car. It was a fresh start that Jeff Burton needed after struggling for a few years. But unfortunately, the 2005 season was not great at all. The team went through growing pains pretty much. The 31 team missed the chase and finished 18th in the points. But in 2006, things would be different, completely different. It would be the start of Jeff Burden's resurgence. In 2006, a crew chief change was made. Replacing Kevin Hamlin, who was Burden's crew chief in 2005, was Scott Miller. Things started off really positive with this driver and crew chief pairing as the 31 team captured the pole for the Daytona 500. Unfortunately for Jeff Burden, that was the highlight for Speed Weeks as he went on to finish 32nd in the Daytona 500. Going forward, the 31 team was either running top 10 or finishing outside the top 20. Pretty much they was inconsistent. This would change though as by race 11 of the season, Burden and his team became the most consistent team. Burden got up to third in the point standards by race 21 of the season the Brickyard 400. Burden went on to make the chase in 06 and was seated 8th. He wasn't there long though as he moved up to 5th in the standings after scoring the top 10 at New Hampshire. The following week, Jeff Burden finally captured something that he's been looking for since 2001. A win. The exhausted voice said, how many laps left? How many laps left? As if to say, how much longer do I have to hold him behind me? There it is. No longer. Clear, clear. clear. This is down the back stretch. Burton is taking the lead. So this is a 41, it looks like. Reed Sorensen is on the apron. Jeff Burton is in turn three. It's a long road back. Jeff Burton's going back to victory lane. Capturing that win not only broke his winless streak, but also moved him into the points lead. Burden held the points lead for a good portion of the chase. One race where he lost a lot of points though was at Talladega. Coming into the race with a 69 point lead, Burden was looking to protect. And for the most part, he did what he had to do for 95% of the race. But at the very end, Burden had an issue that made him come into pit road. Had he not had that issue, Burden would have left Talladega with a damn near 100 point lead. He still had the points lead leaving Talladega, but was only six points ahead. He went on to finish third at Charlotte the following week, but his championship chances were gone after an engine failure at Martinsville of all places. This dropped Burton to fifth in the points and it seemed to kill the momentum the 31 team had. The best finish Burton got for the rest of the year was 10th. Burton would finish the season seventh in the standings. Even though things ended on a negative note, this was the best Burton has looked since 2001. He was really consistent, got a win, and led the points late in the season. Going into 2007, Burden and his team looked to be better. Unlike in the 2006 season, Burden started off the 2007 season a lot better. He got to second in the points and sat second for five straight weeks. Also, Burden accomplished something very early in the season that was scoring a win at Texas. Position, hold about twice more. That's how many laps to go, lap and a half. 
Burton the leader here. Kenseth has the drive off the corner. And Side at the white side. flag, it's Kenseth. Yeehaw. This is it, boys. Can he do it? Burton on the inside. Kenseth on the outside. Burton, That's man. as far as he's been. He got him. 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 Clear, clear, clear. He got him. Yeah. Buddy, bring it home. Bring her home. He got him now. Kenseth got into the this up a little too high off a two. Be smooth, man. Be smooth. He's going to get a run off. It's all yours. Bring yeah. it home. Jeff Burton comes off the corner. Jeff Burton, the first repeat winner in Texas Motor Speedway. Oh. Winning the Samsung 500 after a fierce duel with former teammate Matt Kenseth. Burton comfortably made the chase in 2007. The worst he was in points throughout the regular season was 7th. Going into the chase, Burton was seated 6th, two spots higher than he was the previous year. Burton's chase run was similar to 2006. He didn't lead the points, but he, he started off the chase kind of poorly, but finished the chase on a high note. Compared that to 2006, where he started off the chase strong, but ended bad. In 2007, Burton ended up 7th in the points again. Nobody had anything for Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon, but had Jeff Burton started off the chase a lot better, he would have easily finished third in the points. The problem with the 31 team of Jeff Burton was that they couldn't put the consistency together throughout the entire chase. Going into 2008, Burton and his team looked to put it all together. In 2008, Jeff Burton was once again Mr. Consistent. For the first time since 2006, he led the points. Early in the season though, before he grabbed the points lead, he scored his first win of the season at Bristol. Both the Childers cars will get by him too. Hamlin's got it. a problem there as well as Carl Edwards in the 99. Levin's got the fuel pickup problem. For the first time in 2008, a Chevrolet will go to victory lane. RCR 1, 2, 3, Burton, Harvick, Boyer. Richard Childress Racing has never had a 1-2 finish. One, two, three, they just had a 1-2 Burton led the points for four straight weeks. Even though he lost the points lead by the first Richmond race, he remained in the top three in points for most of the regular season. This was pretty impressive because this was the longest that Burton stayed in the top three in points since the late 90s. Burton in the previous two seasons was a sleeper going into the chase, but in 2008, people expected Burton to perform in the chase, especially with how high he was in the points in 2008. Going into the 08 chase, Burton was seated 5th, the highest he ever been going into the chase. The big question was that could he put it all together in the chase? Well, it started off great. He was 4th in points after New Hampshire. Burton continued to get top 5s and top 10s but couldn't never move up in the points with the guys in front of him being really consistent as well. That was until Charlotte. Burton, once again, did something for the first time since 2001 and that was have a multi-win season. He won Charlotte and moved up to second in the points, 69 points behind Jimmy Johnson. One and a half miles away from a victory at Lowe's Motor Speedway and uh, jumping big time up into serious contention in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Yeah, right now he's uh, 69 points behind. He said he needed to win races to be a serious factor in this. He's driving his way into this championship hunt. That's the way you do it. That's the way he wanted to do it. On an October night, under the lights of Lowe's Motor Speedway, 41-year-old yeah, Jeff Burton hangs on and gets it done. Burton wins at Charlotte. This is exactly what Burton needed, and you would think with that win, it would have given him a lot of momentum and confidence for the rest of the chase. Unfortunately for Burton and the 31 team, they just ran mediocre for the rest of the chase. Finishes of 17th, 18th, 13th, 9th, and 40th, surprisingly. Burton remained in the top 5 in points until Homestead, but finishing 40th wouldn't help. It would drop him to 6 in the points. A decent run at Homestead would have had him finish top 5 in points without a doubt for the first time since the year 2000. Unfortunately, this was the last year that Jeff Burton had a good season. 2009 was a dramatic drop off for the 31 team. Not only Burton ran bad, but RCR as a whole. It was RCR's worst season in a long time. The team eventually got better again, but not as a whole. While Harvick and Clint Boyer were winning races and making the chase, Jeff Burton ran mid-pack. Burton had multiple crew chiefs between the years of 2010 to 2013, but could never get the results he and the team was looking for. Jeff Burton did have one more spotlight moment in his career, and that was in the fall Talladega race in 2011. 
Burton and his teammate Clint Boyer got away from the pack with a few laps to go. Burton was in position to win the race and he led all of them to the tri-oval. But Clint Boyer pulled out and passed and stole the win from Jeff Burton. I remember feeling sorry for Burton after that race because, to be honest, it was probably the last real opportunity at Burton getting a win. In 2013, Jeff Burton announced that he'll be retiring and he'll become an announcer for NBC starting in 2015. And he turned out to be a pretty solid competitor for the most part, in my opinion. I mentioned that Burton was a driver that flew under the radar throughout most of his career and well, people overlooked the years between 2006 and 2008 when he started becoming competitive again. The point of this video was to highlight Jeff Burton resurgence, and yeah, it wasn't the strongest resurgence we've seen from a driver, but it was a solid resurgence. Between the years of 2006 to 2008, Burton scored 4 wins, made the chase 3 years in a row, led the points multiple times, and became the most consistent driver in the field. When people look back at Jeff Burton's career, Hopefully they don't just look at the late 90s and early 2000s, but look at what he accomplished between the years of 2006 to 2008 as well.